Trek, Eridu, Gur of the Chaldees, these were the first cities of the world. For here in Iraq, men first began to build and create a settled way of life. Here were the very beginnings of civilization. The splendor of Babylon is gone, and with it the glories of Assyria. But when you look at the ancient walls of Babylon, with their wonderful animals carved in brick, which in a miraculous way have survived the centuries, you begin to understand the magnificence of Iraq's heritage. For to this place came a long line of conquerors, Persian, Parthians, Sasanians, the Greeks of Alexander the Great, and then the Arabs, marching to the inspiration of a voice heard in Mecca. Here, beside the waters, in a land made fertile with irrigation, the life of Islam flourished for more than 600 years. It was a time of peace and learning, amid the gracious life of the Arabian Nights, when the lovely Scheherazade spun her tales before her king. Then, in our own Middle Ages, the Mongol hordes swept over this land in a tempest of destruction. wanderers upon the face of the earth, and the desert reclaimed the land that men had made fruitful. But in the dark ages that followed, the people of Iraq survived sustained by the bond of a common religion, their faith in Islam. Almost 700 years later, Iraq regained her independence. In 1953, the young kingdom celebrated its first 21 years of existence and the crowning of a young king, the direct descendant of the prophet. The coronation opened a new era in the life of the people of Iraq, listening to their king humbly pledge himself to their future. King Faisal's reign began in an atmosphere of warm goodwill, of confidence in the future and pride in what had already been achieved. In the first 21 years of Iraq's independence, modern industries have taken root. Most important of all, great irrigation schemes have been put in hand to control the waters and lead them once again over the arid plains. Iraq's other great natural wealth is oil, untapped until this century. But now her oil fields are being continuously developed. And the revenue from this new wealth is being used to create more wealth for the betterment of the country.
protect these first fruits of her far-sighted planning and enterprise, Iraq has built up a first-class fighting force, highly disciplined and well-equipped. Water is flowing once more, flowing from the rivers back onto the land, making the desert green again. Agriculture is thriving. Modern machinery and new techniques promise new prosperity. The face of the land is changing. For Nebuchadnezzar, the eternal fires of Baba Goga, the burning fiery furnace of the Old Testament story, were evidence unread of the dark seas sleeping beneath his kingdom. Today, her revenues from oil are helping Iraq to lay the foundation for a new standard of well-being for all her people. The young people of today know that life for them is going to be different and better, far better than it was for their fathers. Their fathers had to tramp for miles through the dust of summer and the winter's mud to the few primitive schools of their day. Now new schools and colleges are giving the youth of the country a proper start in life. When you see these young girls in their western clothes, so assured and confident, you're inclined to forget how surprised their mothers would have been at the idea of training for jobs their daughters take in their stride. Jobs they thought that only men could and should do. Now girls, as well as the boys, can take up almost any profession they choose and know they've a good chance to succeed. For all these young people now, there is the chance of a good education and of good health, the primary needs of any people. And it's natural that with all these modern developments, the women of Iraq are breaking away from their traditional style of dress, unaltered for centuries, to wear the practical, comfortable clothes that are right for this new life. It's a turn of events significant of wider change, of a more liberal attitude to life, of a greater interest in the arts. Ageless Iraq, a new country, but one that hasn't forgotten the glories of its history. A country that is now emerging from the shadows of its past to a future bright with promise. Ready to inherit its true place at the center of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. 